Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of interesting inequality problems. So the first one we'll look at is, let's say you're looking at the absolute value of x minus 1 less than the absolute value of x minus 3. So first of all, I will show you the algebraic approach for this. It has some, some interesting features to it. But first, let me convince you that you don't need it. You just need a number line. So first of all, let's let's understand, right, what does this mean? What this means is the distance, right, between x, some number x, and 1. And this means the distance between x and 3. How do I know that? Well, absolute value is distance. So as a little side note, let me show you what I mean. Let's go down a little bit here. Give myself some more room. All right, so let's say I'm looking at the absolute value of x minus 2. All right, well, what does that look like um, on a number line? Well, this is saying I'm picking any number x, right, and I'm looking at its distance from 2. Let's say the distance from 2 is equal to, I don't know, 4. So this says the distance between, between x and 2 is 4. That's what this is saying, right, this equality. So here's 2. And if I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm at 6. And if I go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm at negative 2. This, a, these are, excuse me, are my two answers. x could be negative 2, and x could be 6. Their distance from 2 is equal to 4. That's what this is. The absolute value is measuring the distance between whatever is here and whatever is here. And we can confirm that. Let's just plug that in. Negative 2 minus 2. That equals negative 4. If you take the absolute value of that, you get 4. It checks out. It balances the equation up here. If you plug in 6, you get the same thing, right? 6 minus 2 is 4, and the absolute value of 4 is 4. So it works. So we have to first accept that. And if we do, then we go up here. What is this saying? This is just saying that the distance between the number we pick and 1 has to be smaller than the distance between this, that number and 3. So pick a number, and the distance between it and 1 is less than the distance between that number and 3. Why don't you pause the video and, and think about what that might be. Okay, so I like to draw a number line for this situation. All right, so I'm, here's the number 1, here's 2, here's 3. I'm trying to pick numbers that are closer to 1 than 3. That's all this is saying, right? So uh, 1 works, right? Does 2 work? Well, 2 is exactly in the middle, so I'm going to not include that. But anything to the left of 2 is closer to 1 than 3, and that's our answer. x is less than 2. And that's the intuition here. Now, granted, there are problems where this intuition would be difficult, but I wanted to show it because here it works out really well. So let's say we don't want to use that approach or we're not able to use it. We can use algebra, and I, I, I always revisit this one. I was talking to my students about it, and I kind of forgot um, what, what is the best way to deal with it. Because typically, let's just say we have this situation. Let's say it's an equality. Okay, so um, when is the distance between a number and 1 equal to the distance between that number and 3? So this is going to be 2, right, because it's right in the middle, both of them. And if you look up most standard algorithms, say, take... Let's say x minus 1, where it equals x minus 3, and also look at where x minus 1 equals the opposite of x minus 3. Because if you have x minus 3 or its opposite, the absolute value of its opposite or its original are the same, right? Absolute value ends up being positive. So if you try to solve this one on the left, you subtract x on both sides, and uh, that those cancel out, and you have negative 1 equals negative 3, which is not true, so this is... This can't help you. Over here, though, if we distribute the negative sign, we have negative x plus 3, and we add x to both sides, and add 1 to both sides, and we get x plus x is 2x. These cancel, and we get 2x equals 4, and x equals 2, and that's our solution. Now, usually you only see these two approaches, and the idea is that you could also take it from the other perspective. You could say, well, x minus 3 equals x minus 1, and x minus 3 equals the opposite of x minus 1. You can take it from that perspective, right? Our first case, we went left to right, and now we're going right to left. But the thing is, with an equality, you might notice, okay, look at this equality right here before we cross it out. 
it's exactly the same as this one. And this one is really the exact same as this one right here. The only difference is that the negative sign is on the opposite side. But I could easily make this equal by dividing both sides by negative 1. And if I did that, I can see that they're exactly the same. Right? These are exactly the same. So the idea is that you don't need to take it from both approaches. But aha! With an inequality, you do want to consider all four cases. So what are the four cases? So case 1. x minus 1 is less than x minus 3. Straightforward enough. Case 2, x minus 1 is greater than the opposite of x minus 3. So what I just did right there was I took the opposite of one side, and that will reverse the direction of my inequality. I also want to look at it from the other perspective, right? So um, x minus 3 is greater than x minus 1. I'm just kind of reading it from this direction. Or x minus 3 is the opposite of, is less than the opposite of, um, x minus 1. So look at this. There are four cases, right? Um, in the first two right here, right, uh, the first two right here, we get, these are basically the same thing but in different orders, right? This is x minus 1 is less than x minus 3. But in fact, if you subtract x from both sides, you just get negative 1 is less than negative 3, which is not true. And over here, you get negative 1 is less than negative 3. They're the same thing read right in different directions. But over here, it does matter which side the negative is on. In the first case over here, we get x minus 1 is greater than negative x plus 3. Just distribute that negative sign. If I add x, I get 2x and add 1. I get 4, and that tells me that if I divide by 2, x is greater than, than 2. But over here, if I distribute the negative sign, I get negative x and plus 1, and that's greater than x uh, minus 3. If I add x over here, I get 2x, add 3, I get uh, 2x is less than 4. So x is less than 2. And then at this point, you can see there's different results. Now, one of them is true and one of them is not, and you want to test it out. So in this case, you can try a number. Uh, x is less than 2, that's 0. 0 minus 1 is that absolute value smaller than 0 minus 3. Well, 0 minus 1, the absolute value is 1, and that's less than 0 minus 3, which is the absolute value of that is just 3. Over here, test a number greater than 2. Plug in 3. Is this true? No, right? 2 is not less than 0. So you want to consider all four of these approaches. Thank you.